Hi, if you're watching this video today, you've probably already heard of the three-quarter rule for home elevator landing doors. Uh, usually when we explain the, the three-quarter rule to builders or uh, GCs, usually the, the conversation goes directly to, how the heck do we build this? How do we make these doors? How do we hang these doors? How do we get it so that it's only three quarters of an inch from the back of the door to the edge of the hoistway? Well, that's what I'm going to, to explain today is one easy way to do that. Um, I'm certainly no carpenter, I'm not a builder, but, uh, but uh, I, I am able to take a standard off-the-shelf door from Home Depot, modify that, and make it ready for the, uh, the new three-quarter rule for home elevators. So what I'd like to do is just run, that, run through that with you today, and, uh, and maybe you'll find that as the easiest way, or maybe it'll give you some ideas of uh, another way to do it. We've seen people do it in several different ways. This is what I, I find is the easiest. So what we'll do is we'll go to a job site, and uh, we'll just uh, jump right into it so let's go here we have a uh, standard off-the-shelf door that I purchased from Home Depot just yesterday um, what we're going to do today is we're going to demonstrate how we can take a standard off-the-shelf door and convert it to a door that works for the three-quarter rule for home elevators now one of the most important things when you're selecting the door is that it's a solid core door it's very important that it's a solid door and make sure you, you never purchase a, a, a hollow door you'll see this this would be right now the inside hoistway the door is going to swing out right now we have about a three inch jam this has to change down to about three quarters of an inch so that's our goal here today is to take away uh, all of this part of the jam here and then uh, get this mounted into a uh, uh, an entrance a landing uh, door for our hoistway all right let's get started okay we're all unpackaged here i'm going to just take out the door stop here and our hinges i have these hinges ready to go So this is the part that we're modifying. The door stays the same. We'll take these hinges off, and then we very carefully want to take apart the uh, corners here. We don't want to damage this because this is going to go right back together once we make our, our modifications. So again, here's where the, the door is going to strike. Right now we have three inches of uh, jam here behind the door on the hoistway side. We're going to cut that down to approximately three quarters of an inch. All right, it's a lot easier to take the hinges off, just lay it down just like this, and then we can just pop these hinges out. All right, so now we got the hinges off. We're just going to take this apart here. These will be stapled together here. We just want to be careful that we don't uh, damage it, so I'm just going to try uh, hammering this apart. All right, yeah, I found using a, uh, a screwdriver uh, helped a lot for getting these uh, uh, staples out. Otherwise, they're, they're, they really have those in there really well. So now this thing should just pop right up. There we go. All right, so we have the uh, pieces of the frame all separated. Now it's time to uh, cut them down. So we're just using a standard table saw here. So uh, if I measure this right now, this, is, this would be the, uh, the outside on the landing. This is where the door is going, the door stop. And then this is the hoistway side. At this point, we're about three and an eighth of, uh, of, of, of a gap behind the door to the hoistway side. We need to change that to three quarters of an inch. I'll start by measuring the three quarters of an inch from the back of the door stop to right here. There's my three quarters of an inch, and then it looks like I need to take two and seven sixteenths off of that. So, and I would err on the side of uh, taking a little extra. You don't want to end up with more than three quarters of an inch. If you end up with five eighths, that's easy to fix. You end up with more than three quarters, that's not so easy to fix. So, so we might go more closer to two and a half here and just c come in a, a little bit more there. Now, I've already set this up to where I want it to be. We're right at uh, between two and seven sixteenths and two and a half already. So we're gonna go ahead and make our cut. And so now we take a look here. We are right just under three quarters of an inch. So maybe closer to five eighths, but that's, that's ideal. Now, one thing I didn't mention is that there's going to be staples in this door stop. Um, th this will go right through them, 
but uh, you might want to go back through and add some more uh, some more uh, staples or finishing nails to, to really uh, hold this in after the fact. There's a good chance that this could fall off pretty easily. All right, let's move on to the next ones. All right, so like I said, uh, we cut right through some of the staples there, so you can see how the door stops coming apart a little bit. So I'm just gonna put a couple tiny staples uh, in here. These are just half inch long staples, just enough to put this back together. Now we could use some glue and clamps, but this actually looks like it's gonna go together pretty, pretty easy here. So we're gonna hold that together there. Now we're good to go. We're gonna move this over into the uh, door frame now. Okay, so I have the frame here in, uh, in our uh, framing. This is going to be the, uh, the inside of the hoistway right here. So what we're going to do is we're gonna put this jam right up against the, uh, the inside edge of our two by four. Now, obviously you have a gap here on the two by four that, that needs to be trimmed out on the, on the front side. So there's several different ways that you can handle that. What I would recommend is that you actually leave enough of a gap for say some one eighth inch uh, Luan, which can come straight out and then marry up with, uh, uh, with your, your uh, casing. So if you, if you just left that one eighth inch there and pin your Luan in, in between here, then you get a nice finished face here and then your casing can come out and, and come right to the edge there. And uh, that way there's still room for your hinges, there's still room for your strike to come across on the other side. For time's sake right now, I'm just going to put, pin this right up against the, the two by four here. Okay, we're just gonna put these hinges on here real quick. Okay, so now I already mounted the door on, uh, on the frame here, got the hinges back on. And uh, so if you take a close look over here, you can see you typically have your, your gap here where your shims are going. If you put a piece of trim material in here, it's very easy then to, to wrap around here. So um, using less shim uh, or putting some shim behind your, your trim material coming out, that gives you that little bit of a step in so that your strike can, uh, can close without uh, scraping and get a black mark along your, your trim. So just that little bit of a recess gives you a nice clean uh, 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 strike on your door and then you can trim around here. And stay, same over on this side here. If you had done the, the Luan behind, you could even do it after the fact. Um, it'll come in behind the hinge and then wrap around and you'll have a nice clean look. It is a little different, like typically your, your doors would be all the way out, but, uh, but it's a subtle difference. Uh, um, this, these doors will look a little bit different than, your, uh, um, than the rest of the doors in the house. Let's go around to the back side here. Okay, so now on the back side, the hoistway side of the elevator, you can see that we have our nice three-quarter inch uh, stopper here. So there's just th between five-eighths and three-quarters of an inch to the, to the end here. I do recommend going maybe a little bit closer to five-eighths. Then you can use a, a nice like one-eighth inch trim on the back here, or you can just mud right up to the edge, whatever you, you prefer. But you need to keep this very thin. You, you don't want to go beyond the three-quarters. It's very important that you don't add casing in here and, and come into that space that we just created. So now with this, uh, with this nice uh, um, stop, we can use this, the, uh, the Atlas interlock here. And this will slide right up into place here. You can see how that will, will fill that, that space perfectly. This uh, uh, cable will go up into the, the studs and disappear. This will slide up uh, onto the, uh, the, the top there, giving it a good firm uh, mounting. And uh, then there'll be a keeper attached to the door to, to latch the door shut. But this is exactly what you're looking for. This is the exact type of preparation that you want in order to do a uh, three quarter inch interlock.